Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about uh, problem 25, which is an optimization problem. So let's just read the problem and see what we're dealing with here. We've got a rectangle that is constructed with its base on the diameter of a semicircle with radius 5. And the other two vertices uh, are on the semicircle itself. Okay, uh, what are the dimensions of the rectangle with maximum area? So uh, first thing that we should always try to do when we're doing uh, an applied optimization problem is let's just set up a picture of the problem if we're able to. So what we've got here is we have a semicircle. And we're told that that has radius 5. And then we've got a rectangle that is inscribed in this semicircle. Here's my rectangle. And uh, notice that this rectangle, that's not the only rectangle that I could inscribe in this thing. I could inscribe a little uh, skinny rectangle. Uh, I guess I should say a short rectangle that's long, or I could have a tall rectangle that's thin. And all of those rectangles that I could inscribe in that semicircle have a different area. And what I'm asking is, of all the rectangles that I could inscribe inside of this little semicircle, which one has the highest area or the maximal area? So I'm trying to optimize the area of that rectangle. And so I should probably set up some values here. Okay, uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the height of this rectangle, let's call that height y. Okay, and I also need a width of the rectangle. But what I'm going to do, and 5, by the way, is the distance right from there all the way to out to here, is I'm going to talk about the distance just to from the middle of the rectangle out to the edge, or the middle of this rectangle out to the edge. We'll just call that x. So actually, the to get all the way across uh, the width of that rectangle, it's actually 2x, the way I've set it up. But I'm just doing it this way because it's going to make life a little bit easier for me in the future. If you set the whole thing up as x, it would work just as well. The numbers would just be a little harder. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to now ask the question, now that we've got a nice picture here, well, what is it that we're trying to optimize? And we already said we're trying to optimize the area of the rectangle. Okay, so we need a formula for the area of this rectangle. And so the area of the rectangle that we're trying to optimize is, well, the length times the width, and the width is uh, 2x. And the height is y. So the area of this rectangle is 2x times y. Okay. Now, uh, again, the problem here, and why I can't just start doing calculus right now, is because the area is in terms of two variables, not one. So when I get the thing that I want to optimize, which is the area, in terms of two variables, now I have to ask the question, well, is there any extra information given in this problem that would help me out here? Okay, and there is. The extra information, though, is kind of subtle in that the extra information is that I'm living inside of a semicircle. And the fact that I'm living inside of a semicircle really gives me this added piece of information. Let's look at, there's the center of my semicircle, and I've got this diagonal that goes out to the semicircle, and I know what that length is because it's the radius of the semicircle. So I could just write in that that is 5. But now I've got this nice right triangle sitting right here, and I can use that as my extra information in this problem, and that is that this side squared plus this side squared is this side squared, my Pythagorean theorem. So I have that this side squared, which is x squared, plus this side squared, which is y squared, is equal to 5 squared, or 25. So here's my extra information 
and I can solve this guy for one of the variables. Doesn't really matter which one. Let's just choose to, let's say, solve for y. So I get that y squared is 25 minus x squared. And so I get that y is equal to, well, plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. But it's obvious that y is not negative. So I can just write that this is the square root of 25 minus x squared. All right. So this is y. And what I want to do is I want to take y, plug it back into the original area formula, the thing that I'm trying to optimize. And I get that area can now be written in just one variable. It's 2x times the square root of 25 minus x squared. And now I've got my area formula in just one variable. And so now I'm ready to use calculus to optimize this thing. OK, so let me erase here. So if I want to find the optimal, or I want to find the absolute max or absolute min, then I want to find the critical values of this function. So I need to take a derivative, set it equal to 0, solve for x. So let's take a derivative of this guy. Notice that uh, this is a product. So to take the derivative, I'm going to need to use the product rule. So I'll set this as my first function. This is my second function. So I get the first guy, 2x, times the derivative of the second guy. But the derivative of the second guy is 1 half times 25 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times the derivative of what's inside, which is minus 2x. Okay, So I've got the first times the derivative of the second plus the second guy, which is square root of 25 minus x squared times the derivative of the first guy, which is 2. OK, so this is my derivative. And now I'm ready to set that guy equal to 0 and solve for x. So if I do, I set this equal to 0. Let's clean this up a little bit. I've got a 2 on top here and a 2 on bottom. So those could cancel. So what's left over is I've got an x times a negative 2x on top. So I've got negative 2x squared on top. And on the bottom, I have the square root of 25 uh, minus x squared. And then over here, I have two square roots of 25 minus, oops, minus x squared. Let's just move this whole term, since it's negative, to the other side of the equation. Um, and I could write this as 2x squared over square root of 25 minus x squared uh, is equal to 2 square roots of 25 minus x squared. Okay, now I could cross multiply. Remember, this is all over 1. So cross multiply these fractions, and what I would get is on uh, one side I'd get 2x squared. And on the other side, I would get 2 times square root of 25 minus x squared times square root of 25 minus x squared, which is just 25 minus x squared. <coughs> so I get 2x squared is equal to 50 minus 2x squared. Or we get that 4x squared is equal to 50. Uh, if 4x squared is equal to 50, that tells me that x squared is equal to 50 divided by 4, which could also be written as 25 over 2. <clears throat> and finally, what I get is that x is equal to the square root of 
of 25 over 2, uh, which is could also be written as x is equal to 5 over the square root of 2. Okay, now I want to find the dimensions of the rectangle that optimize this thing, and I found the x that does the trick for me, right? Uh, I found the x that does the trick, but x is not really one of the dimensions of this rectangle. I really need two x's. And so 2x, which is one of the sides of this rectangle, is 2 times this guy, which is 2 times 5 is 10 over square root of 2. Okay, uh, And then now that I know what 2x is, I should be able to find y. And how do I do that? Well, I could use this equation right here that tells me that y is equal to the square root of 25 minus x squared. So let's use that really quick. Um, let's come back over here. So right now, one of my dimensions I know, that's the 2x, and that's 10 over root 2. And so y, the other dimension, or the height of this rectangle, is going to be the square root of 25 minus x squared. But x is what? x is 5 over root 2. So it's minus 5 over root 2 quantity squared. So y is equal to the square root of, okay, this is 25 minus 25 over 2, right? But that means that y is equal to the square root. Well, 25 is 50 halves. 50 halves minus 25 halves is 25 halves. Uh, so y is equal to 5 over the square root of 2. And uh, we've got our other dimension. So y would be 5 over the square root of 2. 2x would be 10 over square root of 2. And those two multiplied together would give me the area of the rectangle with optimal area that is inscribed inside of that semicircle.